Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Many years ago, a group of men brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty, implemented through the genocide of the natives and enslavement of the Africans and dedicated unequivocally to the proposition that white folks are created. To God, my Lord and Savior, I want to acknowledge the family and the friends and bereaved of the deceased. I say we are gathered here today in the presence of those who care and would dare. Friends and enemies of the deceased and those who are actually aware. The people have spoken and laid their souls to bear. But please don't cry. I say don't cry, because this is not a solemn effect. Felt for the threads and the folds. Felt for my hands, my fingers aflame. Licking the threads, a durable blend of polyester cotton, Dixieland bile, and rotten sentiment. Licked away, licked away, licked away in my hands. Felt for the dead in the folds. Dragged, shot, and strung, but no thread could hold the dead in place. A belated eulogy. Confederate flag, I don't know you well. I don't have a southern drawl. The hick kids in small town New York made fun when they heard I was moving to Nashville. We had one black boy in our school, several Asians, and a Norwegian exchange student. Talking with these few, I understood people are more similar than different, no matter where we come from or how we look or do it. 150 years after the fact, and yet you still fly unreconstructed? So we gather here today to commit you to the earth, put you in the ground, bury you now and forever? This is symbolic. We know what we do here today will not bring about an immediate end to the deeply ingrained system of racial abuse, white supremacy, institutionalized poverty, the school to prison pipeline, disparities in access to health care and education and housing and work. It won't end that. This is about a symbol. So let's talk about the symbol of this. Surviving on the boiling blood of its rich history yet poor representation given there was no victory. The Confederate battle flag has 150 years of post-mortem activity a zombie-like tradition that would hold on to past memories and suggest I get over it. I suggest we lay it to rest. I suggest we stop pretending it has nothing to do with the enslaved and oppressed. When loss of your wealth, prosperity, and way of life is what they threaten you with, and the condition of subordinates is all that's in the way. Searching for Abraham Lincoln, the belated burial of the Confederate flag. Visited Springfield, flew to Louisville, drove Bardstown Road to St. Catherine College, then on to the Starving Artist Cafe. Welcome to Springfield, Kentucky. Wandered main streets, side streets, lost for hours. Small suitcase weighed down with heavy words. The Emancipation Proclamation, the Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln's words, his works, his life, biography of his boyhood. He was spiritual, intuitive, psychic. Where will you be when they come? Pat Parker. This spit would have made mud of the thick mound, might have given new life to the dry bones, could have pulled and thinned the phlegm of disgust, congesting any possibility they could conceive for redemption, but they will not come. They suck on their teeth and turn their eyes to razor-sharp slits, pull navel to spine and straighten their backs against the ceremony, and will not come. For loved ones, we mourn. For the admired, we pay respects. But for symbols of oppression, banners of genocide, we remember how the stitching held together white anger. United, misguided, poor against themselves to uphold the institution of slavery. And there was nothing peculiar about the carnage. Bodies unfamiliar with war torn from their centers. Knowing that I walk atop the bones of my ancestors, in the shadow of their oppressors, towering statuesque above me. I cannot look down without feeling the puzzled pieces of my past beckoning me back together. I cannot look up without feeling the weight of history break me into pieces. I cannot leave this ground and feel whole. I cannot stand it either without its heavy sky pummeling my dreams into nightmares. The ground is a haunt. Stars and stripes, geometrics of southern covenants, elevation, written shared their greatest nation, unions were reborn. 
their crosses burn, we rubber ranged it, await the day, amazing grace that reapers reap and do away with the grandest of dragons. Bygones are bygone, and then gone from, scorned and mourned, their mother torn from, shorn and porn, messiahs born in the wilderness of north. It seems that there's this intercultural communication impediment, and it's assumed that we're fishing to stir sediment. And since my skin's the same hue as the precedents, let's you say another culture's precedents. The Gaelic folk oft preferred limericks. These poems appeal to the simplest. It's simple to think that old slavery stink doesn't cling to that flag, dear degenerates. I know, it's just plain niggerish to imply that your great-grands were venomous. For those that don't know, I'm a poet that goes by a surreal sister. I'm a cosmic indoctrinating corn chip off the Big Dipper. The first I'd heard about the deceased was during Black History Month in the fourth grade. Ever since, I've referred to him as Master Gray, or his maliciousness. I remember first meeting Master Gray in person during my visit to South Carolina, where his maliciousness was a respected government official. And although Mo is the show-me state, I had never seen Master Gray so openly celebrated in the 21st century. We are not here out of sadness. We are here with transports of delight and stand victorious over this symbol of mischievous horror. This flag is representative of failure to acknowledge defeat. This flag represents the oppressor's dream. This flag is symbolic of domestic terrorism. We do not excuse it as white pride and heritage and tradition. There is no honor in that. There is no such thing as accidental racism. Only proud moments of character failure. I never thought it would come to this. But today we just we mark a, a really powerful moment in time. We've buried the flag. This flag represents all kinds of hate and mistrust. And we're in a new rise of consciousness right now where people are beginning to come together. And it's not about what this flag represents anymore. So as we bury it, I just want to say good riddance. Stained in blood, waving in the humid breeze of the sudden heat. This flag has cast a looming shadow over the unfathomable proliferation, unified in their longing for liberation. Countless lives sacrificed daily in a continual ritual, while singing hymns of dark spirituals, only to have their spirits served as substance to a horde of demons within the temple of greed. The most beautiful hues of flesh, burned, tar, hung, mutilated, and even eaten, all for the sick, sadistic, twisted amusement of cotton king. We cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate. We cannot hollow this ground and this exhibition space. The ideas, both living and dead, both constitutional and artistic, that have struggled here in these spaces have consecrated it far above.